In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a crazy piecewise function graph like this and write the piecewise function equation that goes with it. First of all, recognize what each one of these parent functions is. The parent function of this graph um, is x cubed. The parent function of this graph is the absolute value of x. And the parent function of this graph is going to be x squared, because this is a parabola. All right, so these are the parent functions. Now all we have to do is consider what the transformations are. So let's take each one of these one at a time. Let's start with x to the third power. All right, the center of the x to the third power graph, or the point of inflection where it switches from curving down to curving up normally would be at the origin. But instead we see that the point of inflection is here. So that tells us that this graph has been moved to the left four. Okay. Um, now imagining that this was the origin for a minute. Pretend this was the origin the graph of the um, x to the third power would normally go like this. Um, at 1, 1 cubed is 1. Okay, and we have the mirror image here. And then 2 cubed um, would be 8. So I would, if I went over to 2, I'd be at 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8 would be like right here. And then I'd have another point here. So this graph seems to match that part of it. So the only transformation is left for. Okay, so that means that the um, equation for this function is going to be um, x plus 4 cubed. All right, because that would be the left four. So that's what I'm going to put for this piece of the piecewise function. I'm going to put x plus four cubed. Now I need to put the domain of this piece of the function. Okay, in interval notation, this would be negative infinity to negative three. Okay, so I could just put negative infinity to negative three. Um, that's a closed circle, so I'm going to put a bracket. I also could have said instead x is less than or equal to negative three. That would have been the same thing. All right, so that's it for that piece of the piecewise function. Now let's move on to the absolute value. I see the slope hasn't changed. Uh, I know it's supposed to go up one over one, up one over one but it has been moved up two. Okay, so the equation for this function would be um, absolute value of x plus two. So that's what I'm gonna put, absolute value of x plus two. And now I need to put the domain. The domain is from negative three to positive three. See the open circles? So I'm gonna put um, negative three to positive three with parentheses to show that it's not included. Okay, as an inequality that would have been negative three is less than x which is less than three. This would, this would mean the same thing. All right, now the third and final piece of the piecewise function is this parabola. Um, again, Imagining that this was the origin, it would be 1 comma 1 and then 2 comma 4. So these points are falling in the normal way. So this is just shifted uh, to the right by 4. So the uh, equation for this should be x minus 4 squared. Because that's what it looks like when you shift something to the right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put x minus 4 squared 
and then I'll put the domain, which is from 3 to infinity, with a bracket because of the closed circle. All right, and that's it. This is the uh, piecewise function that matches the graph. All right, um, so now we're supposed to answer some questions about the function that we just wrote. What is the domain? So the domain is going to be the x values. So sometimes I like to highlight the x axis to help me see what I'm doing. So the domain of this first piece is from negative infinity uh, to negative 3. The domain of the second piece goes from negative 3 to positive 3. The domain of the third piece goes from 3 to infinity. So altogether, the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity with no breaks in it. Okay, so the domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, uh, what about the range? All right, the range is going to work out the same way this time. The, the range for the first piece is negative infinity to 1. The range of the second piece is from 2 to 5. And the range of the third piece is from 0. Now, notice how this is going to overlap some of the yellow that I've already drawn, and that's OK. Uh, but the range of the third piece goes from 0 to infinity. So 0 to infinity. So if I look back and ask myself, what is the range of the function as a whole? it's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Every y value is represented. Now, for number four, we need the zeros of the function. So where does the function cross the x-axis? Well, it crosses at negative four and positive four. So those are the zeros of the function. What are the y-intercepts of the function? Well, where does the graph cross the y-axis? Well, it crosses right here at 0, 2. Now, technically, an intercept is an ordered pair, like 0, 2. The zeros are just the x values where uh, the function touches the y-axis. All right, if I had asked for the x-intercepts, I would have put negative 4, 0, and 4, 0. I, mean, I don't think it's a big deal either way, but if you want to be precise, I think this is accurate. Um, give the points of discontinuity for f of x and identify the type, infinite, jump, or removable. So um, where is the function broken? What are the x values? So here's a discontinuity at negative 3. This is a jump discontinuity. All right, there's another break in the function here at positive 3. This is also a jump discontinuity. All right, the other two types are infinite if there's an asymptote and a removable if there's a hole, like meaning like if you just had a curve with a single point missing. This would be removable. All right, but we don't have any of those. So there's a jump discontinuity at negative 3 and positive 3. Okay, graph the transformation um, negative one half f of x, uh, well f of x plus three on the graph above. Label the transformed points neatly. 
I like to do transformations like this using a table of values. So I'm going to pick a few key points to help me out. So um, from the first piece, here are some points that I would like to use. All right, this would be a good point, and this would be a good point, and I'll say, you know what, I'm going to pick this point way down here. This would be a good point. So these are the three points I'm going to use to help me with the first piece of the piecewise function. So um, this is going to be a little bit of a long table, I believe. Okay, so I have the point negative 6, comma, negative 8. Okay, and the point negative 4, comma, 0. and the point negative three comma one. Okay, now from the next piece of the graph, and maybe I'll change colors here, I'm gonna use this point, and this point, and this point. So this is negative three, um, five. So I've got negative three, five, and zero, two, and three, five. Okay. So now switching over to the parabola. I'm going to use this point and this point and this point. Okay, I think that, that'll, that'll get it done. So um, this first point is the point three comma one. And then four comma zero. Just make it a little bit longer. Six comma four. Okay, I'm going to use these points to do my transformations. So when I look at this equation, in my mind I'm thinking that anything happening outside the function is going to affect the y values. So this negative one half is going to affect the y values. So this is so I'm going to wind up doing negative one half y. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to need a new y column. And I will find all those new y values by doing negative one half y. Okay, now what else was there? Anything happening inside the function is going to affect the x values. Um, so don't forget this is a shift left 3. So I'm actually going to have to do x minus 3 because it's a shift left 3. So that's what I'm going to do to make a new x column. Hmm, I did not leave myself a lot of room. But I'm going to do x minus 3. You want me back and move this just a little bit closer. I need a little bit more room. Okay, so I'm going to have a new x column and a new y column. So if I subtract 3 from all of these, I'm going to get minus 9, minus 7, minus 6, minus 6, negative 3. 0, 0, 1, and 3. These are my new x values. Um, if I, if I um, multiply all these y values by negative 1 half, so this is going to be positive 4 and 0 and negative 1 half, 
or maybe I'll use decimals right now. So negative 0.5. Okay, this is going to be negative 2.5. Right, half of 5 is 2.5. This is going to be negative 1. Negative 2.5 again. Um, negative 0.5. 0 and negative 2. All right, so I've got my new x values and my new y values, so I'm ready to graph. Okay, um, all right, I think I will graph my new function in blue since my original function is in red. So negative 9 comma 4. Okay, negative 9 comma 4 is a little bit off the graph, but that's going to have to be okay. All right, negative 9 comma 4 would be about here. All right, so that's this point. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do negative 7 comma 0. So that's going to be right here. And then I'm going to have negative 6, comma, negative 0.5. So negative 6, negative 0.5 would be about here. So this piece of the function is going to look something like this. All right, now I'm going to graph the little v part of the graph. So um, I've got negative 6, negative 2.5. Okay, so negative 6, negative 2.5. And remember, this was an open circle. I'm, I'm basically right here. And then I had um, 0, comma 2, which is going to be right here. Uh, no, sorry. Um, I'm doing the red point. So I have negative 3, negative 1. Okay, so negative 3, negative 1 would be here. And then I have um, 0, negative 2.5. So 0, negative 2.5. Again, open circle because I'm doing these two. Okay, so I'm going to have this. Okay, and that's the middle piece of the graph. And now let's do this parabola part. So I have 0, comma, negative 0.5. All right, and that's going to be a closed circle because that's this point right here. Um, I have 1, comma, 0. Okay, so 1, comma, 0 is right here. All right, so I'm just mirror imaging because like this is the vertex, it's a parabola, this is the vertex, it's a parabola, so I know I'm gonna have a mirror image. Um, but what else? I have the point three comma negative two. So three comma negative two would be right here. Okay, so this parabola is gonna do something like this. All right, that is about what the transformed graph would look like. And you can just notice the three transformations happening. This should be reflected over the x-axis. It should be vertically compressed by a factor of one-half. And it should be left three. So if you look at my new graph, you can see how everything is shifted left three. Everything is upside down. That's the reflection over the x-axis. And everything is sort of crushed. Everything is shorter, especially if you look at the V. And you can see that this is vertically compressed. It's, uh, it's half the size as it was. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. 
Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.